Hello, everybody. Welcome into Talking Fitchburg on this Friday, April 8th, 2022, a special edition of Talking Fitchburg. This week, we've been talking about Severe Weather Awareness Week, and today we're talking with the National Weather Service, Milwaukee Sullivan. Tim Holbach will be here and uh, sharing two, uh, information in a two-part interview. We'll talk a little bit about severe weather in general and some safety tips that's coming up. So we got to get right to our headlines, and we start with Wonders of Physics. This Sunday, Fact TV, we will be broadcasting Wonder Wonders of Physics live at 1 and 4 p.m. Tickets have sold out for this uh, over uh, the last couple months. So if you want to watch it, you can watch it right here at Fact TV. We're excited to broadcast it. And happening this weekend is the Spring Recycling Day event that includes confidential, confidential paper shredding, electronic recycling, there are some extra fees for the electronic recycling, and of course, your med drop off as well. That does it for the headlines. We'll be uh, talking with Tim Halbach for the National Weather Service next right here on Talking Pittsburgh. just trying to keep things running for those who rely on us. That's why we don't have time to be sick with the flu. And especially this year, no one has time to get sick. Get a flu shot for yourself and those around you too. Well, welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joined me today from the National Weather Service, Milwaukee Sullivan. I just got chills. We've got Tim Halbach here. Tim, uh, welcome back to the show. How are you doing today? Uh, thanks for having me. I'm doing fantastic. Uh, nice to see you back in the office, although I love the basement setup, so I don't know. I mean, it's this it's great to see the weather service in the background, but. I, I'd rather be here. <laughs> <laughs> understood, <laughs> understood. Well, yeah. you got all the, all the fun technology is there, so I mean, I could understand why being there would be a bonus anyways, but. <laughs> right. Uh, right, well, um, either way, uh, we're glad to have you here. Uh, it is uh, Wisconsin's uh, Tornado and Severe Weather Awareness Week, and uh, we're so glad you're taking the time here. We've got two parts to talk about. First, we're going to kind of talk a little bit about uh, just the history in Wisconsin, look back at last year, uh, and kind of maybe even put your uh, your prediction cap on and see uh, what uh, this season could bring us. He didn't know I was going to ask him that, but here we are. And then we'll talk some safety in the second segment. But overall, uh, we, we go through this week. Why? Why do we why do we do this each and every year? Well, in Wisconsin, we have two distinct uh, seasons uh, where we have some some higher end type severe hazardous weather. So we have winter. There's a mentality with uh, being prepared for winter storms, you know, planning out you know, whether or not you need to be driving somewhere and what kind of things you can do to stay safe so that you don't get uh, into trouble with that. But then you kind of lose some of the severe weather safety stuff. You don't maybe get as in tune to, you know, if there's a tornado warning or if there's severe thunderstorm warnings, what kind of stuff do I do when that happens? So it's kind of a mentality shift. Um, I know with it being kind of cold and rainy and snowy lately, it's hard to maybe think about that, but this is the best time to actually start thinking about that because we're at the time of the year when we start seeing more active weather patterns. Uh, we're actually kind of looking at that early next week. Um, when we don't want that first weather event to be the one that causes issues for people that um, you know, if a warning gets issued, you know, why are the sirens going off or maybe why aren't they not going off? Um, no, so there's all kinds of stuff that happens this time of year when we're trying to kind of just kind of get people to start thinking about that stuff again. Um, and, you know, to kind of be prepared so that when we do have a day that is a bad tornado day, people are ready. Yeah, and it's uh, it's, it's good to, to talk the information, refresh everybody on, on what's going on. Uh, and, and Tim, overall, nationally, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's just a general feeling and I, I but are we seeing more severe storms nationally or are we seeing more devastation? I mean, it seems to me that, and it's not just severe weather, it's fire. I mean, it's just active weather uh, across the U.S. So uh, is there talk in the weather service about this and about more destructive storms? Uh, it kind of ebbs and flows. Um, they're, they're, you know, for Wisconsin, speaking directly to us, um, last year, we had a higher number of tornadoes than um, we've had and uh, considered what's to normal. Um, but the 
you know, kind of every season is a little bit different. You know, if you get one bad tornado that hits a city, that's a bad season for you. You know, so it does, you know, even if we have a very active season or maybe what you'd consider like a, a not very active season, um, all it takes is that one bad tornado uh, for it to be kind of considered a, a really bad situation. Uh, the year that Oakfield happened was a relatively quiet tornado season. And we had the NF5 happen uh, in a city. Um, so, uh, you know, the kind of mentality might be that like, well, things have been a really bad year. It is a bad year because that one tornado hit a city and that's what we have to be prepared of. So even if it is, you know, a, a long stretch where maybe we don't have a whole lot of active weather, um, you know, it's still gotta be ready for when that stuff happens. So um, the South, uh, they have severe weather all year. They don't really have, you know, what like Kansas, Oklahoma has, where it's a pretty well-defined tornado season. They, they have a period in uh, mid to late spring through early summer that like people in, in the plains are like, all right, it's, it's severe weather season. I gotta be ready for tornadoes. The Southeast, um, they have a few kind of peaks throughout the year, but they can have these big explosive severe weather outbreaks throughout the year. So it's a, it's a different way of life uh, when it comes to severe weather preparedness down there. But um, for us, it's just, you know, we could have one bad one and that's enough. Yeah, right. It, it only takes one bad storm that's that could be devastating to, to everyone. Uh, talking about being prepared and preparedness, are there new tools uh, at at people's disposal? We're seeing a lot of talk, and I, I love the outreach uh, this year and every year that you guys do, but you're spending a lot of time this year talking about multiple ways of receiving warnings. It's been there. It's not a new thing, um, but uh, definitely it's so important, and we have so much technology in our hands. Uh, why not uh, find those places to get good uh, good information? Yeah, uh, it's, you know, there are times when uh, some of the devices might not work. Uh, we, you know, there, there are times where uh, some things work better for different people. So a lot of times when I've gone out and I've, I've seen people after a tornado, I've, I'll ask, you know, what, how did you know if that warning got issued? And most times it's the cell phone that's in people's pocket. Um, you know, you're, you're typically busy. So you're looking around or maybe you're like, chopping wood in the backyard or your lumberjack or something like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, something that is always on you that kind of draws your attention to, oh, something bad is, is coming my way. So the wireless emergency alerts, that's uh, the most common way that people get warnings now. Um, last August, there was a, a change to those uh, alerts and what will actually trigger the, the wireless emergency alerts. So. Severe thunderstorm warnings are now part of that. Um, the one of the things that will go set your phone off, but it's only for the very high end uh, severe thunderstorm warnings that we issue. So, uh, looking through our database, it's maybe like once every other year that we we put one of those types of warnings out. But it's the again just kind of get people aware that uh, something really bad is is coming their way. So. Um, some of the other ways, no weather radio, that's probably the fastest way that, you know, when I'm, I'm sitting here clicking on the button to issue a warning, the weather radio is the first thing that's going off in our office. And then shortly after that, it's the cell phones, it's uh, television, radio, all that stuff is going off too. So um, sirens are a part of the warning system, uh, but they, they're more so for people that are outdoors. Uh, so that's something that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's supposed to be for those types of people if you're out you know having a soccer game or something like that but sirens are more so meant for those types of people uh turning our attention uh to the warnings and it, it for what you guys the men and women of the weather service what you do is so difficult um but we're, we do get storms occasionally that come in there's th their thunderstorms and then all of a sudden bam they're like starting to to really ramp up and then storms roll through and then we find out oh my gosh that was a tornado actually we had it earlier this year already um but it, i guess it walk people through that because i think it's important to share that information that there's a lot of factors there's a lot of things going on and uh it, it's difficult especially at night uh to to figure out and get eyes on on some of these storms but walk us through what that process looks like yeah, so uh, earlier in March when we had the storms come through uh, the Stoughton-Dunkirk area uh, in Dane County there, 
Um, that was a day that previously had been a pretty bad day down in Iowa. Uh, the cluster of storms down there produced some long track tornadoes. Uh, there were some fatalities from those storms uh, as they came through. And then as they got up into southern Wisconsin, they had kind of trailed off a bit. Uh, they weren't at the same intensity that they were earlier. And um, as they entered southwestern Wisconsin, um, they they started to kind of slowly get more intense. Uh, we weren't there weren't many there weren't any other damage reports that happened out in southwestern Wisconsin. But then the storms perked up right over uh, uh, Dane County there and produced a tornado and uh, quite a bit of wind damage in uh, Stoughton. So. You know, obviously our goal is to issue warnings on every storm. We want everybody to stay safe and we want to get warnings to let people know that that, that inclement weather is there. But that whole warning system starts with us. So it's not, um, we work with Dane County Emergency Management and all the other uh, counties around uh, in Southern Wisconsin to, you know, if there's something that happens, it all starts with us. We, we're the ones responsible for hitting the button on the warning and then the sirens are going off because of that. Um, so what happened with the Stoughton area is uh, it was a quick spin up. And by the time what we were looking at on radar became evident that something had happened, it had already gone away. So we didn't want to, you know, what, whatever was there wasn't an issue anymore uh, going through the rest of uh, Dane County for tornadic at least, and we didn't have any other tornadoes besides that one. So we didn't put out a tornado warning because we didn't want to warn people that didn't need to get that warning. However, the storms then east of there uh, had some had some wind with it. So we had severe thunderstorm warnings going beyond that. So it's it's a difficult seat for us to, to be in to, to issue those warnings because, you know, we don't want to overwarn because we get feedback from people saying, oh, the I'm getting warnings on my phone all the time. And Sometimes nothing happens. Um, and then the times when something does happen and we don't have a warning out, um, you know, then, you know, that's when you start risking, you know, injuries and fatalities and things like that a little bit more. So it, it's our goal to be able to warn people as much as possible. Um, but uh, we also have to be a little careful with tossing warnings out on, on everything. So um, after something like that happens, we do an internal review and we kind of go through our, what kind of signs did we miss here that we could have maybe jumped on this like five minutes earlier or something like that. Yeah. And like I said, I think it's such a tough, it's tough a hundred percent. And uh, you know, I have total respect for you, but I think it's also good to, to explain that out a little bit in uh, those unique situations, if you will. Um, but that still doesn't uh, mean that you guys don't get ahead of, uh, we, we still get updates from the storm prediction center and, and thunderstorm outlooks and, you know, watches and even warnings. So, and, and maybe quickly here, uh, the watches warnings, or if you guys are starting to say, hey, and, and you're great, great on the website. If you guys haven't followed the weather service on social media or the website, you can get a pretty good idea when it's going to storm um, and, you know, uh, days ahead usually. So I guess looking at that front too, uh, there are definitely ways ahead of storms, whether it's going to be at that moment at that time, hard to say, but usually you got a pretty good idea. Something's going to happen. Yeah, it all starts with the thunderstorm risk outlook. So you'll see these areas that are highlighted uh, from the Storm Prediction Center that talk about what areas are more likely to get severe weather um, in a forecast set. So it goes out uh, eight days. The, the next three days are typically the more emphasis is put on those because um, it, the events coming in to focus a little bit more. So it's on a scale from one to five. Uh, typically, it starts. It starts. It always starts with marginal, slight, moderate, or enhanced, moderate, high. Um, when we start seeing that we're in a slight risk, um, that's typically our threshold for being concerned about widespread severe weather, and it's something that we do coordinate with the Storm Prediction Center on with those forecasts to say like, hey, I, we're. It's kind of looking a little bit worse than what you're thinking there, or vice versa as well. Um, so those are just to kind of give you a sense of what today might be like or the what the severe weather risk might be like. So the higher up on that scale, the more widespread and potentially hazardous weather is going to occur that day. doesn't mean on those slight risk or marginal days that you can't have a storm or two that go really bad, but um, might not just be as widespread. So from there, it's the watches, uh, severe thunderstorm watches, tornado watches. Those get issued when it's about two to six hours out from when uh, those conditions might happen for the storms. And then a warning means that that storm is there and it's time to take action. So while that watch is out, 
the warnings will come out on top of that. All right. Well, we're going to continue our discussions with safety. Uh, I've already got over my time, uh, of course, but uh, Tim uh, Hallbach from the National Weather Service here in Milwaukee Sullivan uh, talking with us uh, about uh, storms and beyond, answering every, every question that I can throw at you. So we'll take a quick break. More to come. You're watching Talking Pittsburgh. After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. See on page four that the projections need to be blood next Thursday. Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Well, welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. We're here with uh, Tim Hallbach from the National Weather Service, graciously uh, taking some time here to be with us today. And uh, we're going to be talking about the safety. So all this week uh, during uh, Wisconsin's Tornado and Severe Weather Awareness Week, uh, you have uh, have been discussing uh, different safety aspects uh, daily. Uh, so we're going to go through those ones really quickly. And we're going to start with the warning. We kind of talked a little bit about it in our first segment, the, the warnings. Um, but maybe uh, to point it out, uh, the impact-based warning levels. I thought it was nice that you shared that this year uh, because you don't always look at that. You're just like, well, it's a warm storm, so I'll just take cover. And that should probably be the stance, but here's some criteria to help understand a little bit more of what's going on. Yeah, every tornado is created differently. Uh, so there are certain ones that, um, you know, if, we, if we're not seeing very strong rotation, um, you know, it might be looking like it's more on the lower end of the scale, maybe not as pressing for, you know, potential for injuries and loss of life. Um, we want to talk about that tornado a little bit differently than if, say, we're seeing a Barneville type tornado on radar, where those situations are, all right, we need everybody to know that this really bad situation is about to unfold for the city. So um, this, this is a scenario, like, you, if you know somebody that's in the city and, uh, you know, they're not taking shelter, like, you need to help, like, send a text to a friend to say, hey, just checking in to make sure that you're in your shelter that kind of stuff. So uh, for tornado warnings and uh, severe thunderstorm warnings and flash flood warnings, we have three levels that we go to for each of these warnings. Tornado warnings, there's a base level and then considerable and catastrophic. The highest end is considered a tornado emergency. For severe thunderstorm warnings, uh, which is new as of last August, uh, the baseline severe thunderstorm warnings, there's considerable and then destructive are the three levels for that. So uh, going from 60 miles per hour to 70 miles per hour to 80 miles per hour, and then different hail sizes as well. For flash flooding, uh, same thing as with the tornado warnings, base, considerable, and then uh, emergency catastrophic level type flooding. So uh, just talking about warnings in different levels to try to make sure people know kind of the severity of the actual weather. Yeah. And uh, you, you can uh, kind of, when you they put the updates out, the, when you click the button and the, the, the information starts to drop, that's showing up on your website uh, and on the weather radios. Is that uh, correct? Plus what the meteorologists yeah. read on the TVs as well. Yeah, exactly. So you'll see if you click on the warning, you actually read out down at the bottom, there's some tags where you can see what level we're at. And some of the verbiage in the warning itself will kind of change too to say, this is a particularly dangerous situation. Uh, you need to be in your shelter. Uh, this is a deadly tornado, that kind of stuff. Um, so you'll, you'll start hearing kind of that heightened sense of, all right, this is, this is kind of freaking me out. I need to make sure I'm, I'm where I need to be. So, you know, we're not trying to freak people out, uh, but we're trying to kind of say, this is, this is where we're at. Yeah, absolutely. And that, it's good. I, it, it's the transparency on it is really good, I think, to understand a little bit better uh, what's happening uh, at your office and as you're trying to put together your plan uh, uh, and putting it into action. So pretty good uh, info. Uh, moving on Tuesday, you talked a little bit more on the uh, storm damage side of things, uh, the, the sizes uh, uh, and that sort of thing. Overall, um, you've seen a lot of things because you go out and actually do survey damage, um, which uh, I would love to take along with you on that one just to understand uh, what you're looking for and, and understanding the power of mother nature, which is uh, 
uh, pretty crazy. But start with the winds, uh, strong winds, and what that kind of looks like from severe thunderstorm to tornado. Yeah, so with damaging winds, uh, this is the most common type of severe weather that we get in Wisconsin. And uh, there's a lot of times where people are like, well, that that damage had to have been a tornado because, you know, wind can't do that. Well, tornado is just a wind. Um, so straight line winds can be almost, they can be worse because it's over a much, much more widespread area. Uh, so you might be talking all of Dane County as opposed to a tornado, which carves a, a path through just a, a small portion of it. So um, not to kind of diminish tornadoes, but um, sometimes straight line or downburst winds kind of get kind of thrown to the side as not being as big of a deal. If you're outside during uh, a straight line wind or downburst wind type of event, uh, the people that are most uh, susceptible to something from those types of winds would be people that are camping. A lot of times you'll put your tent right underneath the tree because it's middle of summer and it's hot and you want some kind of shade. Uh, if the wind comes up and that tree falls down, your tent's not going to be able to hold that back. So uh, that's something to think about if you are camping to know where the shelter is uh, when if, if a severe thunderstorm warning were to be issued. Um, so that that's the most common type of severe weather that we have here in Wisconsin. Uh, turning our attention to flooding, uh, which is the, uh, again becoming uh, kind of, we hear a lot of flooding things. We had our big event a couple of years ago here in Dane County, um, but uh, flash flooding, uh, very dangerous and takes a lot of lives across the U.S. Yeah, it's the most common way from thunderstorms for people to be injured or, or killed, unfortunately. A lot of times it's with people that are driving through flooded roadways where they see this low crossing and they're like, ah, it doesn't look like a whole lot. I'm just gonna go drive through that. When they don't know underneath that that pavement is completely gone. So as soon as you hit that water, poof, your car or truck is in the water and you're at the mercy of that flowing water uh, that's, that's going by. Um, sometimes it might look like the road is there. Uh, the cement slab on top might all still be intact, but if there's a culvert, the water will kind of rush through and kind of blow things out and your car or truck being on that all of a sudden is gonna be what's gonna collapse it into the road. So unfortunately, that's that's how a lot of people uh, drown um, because of the, those driving through a flooded roadway like that. So um, we don't we don't want anybody to, to have to go through that. Um, and like you said, people in Dane County were familiar from the, the heavy rains from 2018 when uh, we had like 10 to 15 inches of rain in a short amount of time. So that's a classic flash flood type situation. And uh, I would love to just pick your brain on the, the drought situation that we're in. And, you know, would that, how would that turn into flooding? But we'll save that for another, uh, another episode of uh, asking random questions by Jeremy. Uh, turning to Thursday, uh, and, and we, we talked a lot about the tornado stuff. Uh, maybe important uh, from some of the, the, when you're out doing some of the survey damage and you're talking to folks, uh, are people getting to their shelters and, and finding ways of, of shelters and having stuff there to protect themselves? So more, more than just even getting to the shelter, they have blankets there, they have a safety kit. Do you ask some of those questions uh, when, when we're looking at those severe weather? Yeah, we actually heard something really great from a family in the Concord area from last, uh, it was the, the overnight, the July 28th into the early morning of July 29th. Uh, we had some tornadoes in Dane County that night as well. Um, some people in Concord where we had a little bit of a stronger tornado go through, um, they had heard the forecast that there was going to be severe weather and potential for tornadoes overnight. So what their family did was have a sleepover party in their basement uh, when the, you know, they, they're like, well, we don't want to wake our kids up in the middle of the night because uh, they might be kind of a train wreck. Like, let's just put them down in the basement. We'll have like board games and we'll go to, we'll, we'll go to sleep down there and we'll just, you know, ride it out down there. And uh, they, their house got hit by the tornado. And uh, if they had been up on the upper level uh, where the kids would have been, uh, there could have been, you know, some injuries or something like that, um, but uh, they were playing it safe. And I think that's something that I learned from that. I'm like, I think that's a great idea. I, I did that in December when we had the, the storms coming through in the middle of the night that um, I know my kids don't sleep well when it's very windy. So why not just, you know, sleep in the basement if you have that kind of situation. So um, a lot of the other questions we get are with people that are in apartment complexes or that situations where they might not have a basement. 
And just what we tell people to do is just put as many walls between you and the outside as possible and try not to be in the highest level of the apartment complex. You might not have to get uh, you know, all the way down to like a below ground shelter, but as long as you're not in the top level, because it's typically the roof is, is the first thing that goes if, uh, if a tornado comes through. So get as many walls between you and the outside, stay away from windows and uh, not be in the top level of that apartment complex. Fantastic. Uh, finally, and we never leave enough time for this, uh, but I think is a growing trend is just the heat um, and a heat emergency is um, so, so severe because a lot of times it's this big burst of hot air that just sits on us for, for days in and days out. Uh, and that's when we get in trouble. So uh, where do you start with uh, heat safety and, and, and talking in Wisconsin? Yeah. And, you know, people might kind of scoff, you know, well, it's been so cold. Like, why do I need to worry about that? Well, this is actually the time of year um, where we might not have heat advisories and excessive heat warnings that we issue at this point of year. But when we have these extended periods of cold temperatures, and then all of a sudden we get thrown into, you know, you know, people joke that we're going straight from winter into summer. People's bodies have a harder time being able to deal with that heat and the humidity all of a sudden when you're kind of thrust into that kind of a, a weather setup. So we can have some heat issues uh, even early in the season when, you know, maybe we get into the 80s and it's it's really humid out. Um, so those are some of the things to start, you know, considering as you kind of get through the spring here and you're you're doing your kind of the housekeeping is, you know, getting the air conditioners running again and making sure the, the storm windows are off so that if, you know, if you have, um, you know, folks that might be a little bit more uh, critical when it comes to the heat, uh, the, the young ones and the old ones are typically the ones that we kind of say, like, you know, make sure to check on them, make sure that help them out in case they need to put an air conditioner in a window or uh, to get the fans down from uh, wherever they might be storing them for over the winter. So um, something, you know, some things to think about with the heat. All right. Well, our time is running out here. I just want to quickly have you plug uh, where people can find more information about uh, from the National Weather Service, Milwaukee Sullivan, uh, and stay up to date with what's going on. You got a lot of fascinating things I find fascinating, but uh, I think other folks would too. So uh, how can they stay up with what's going on uh, at uh, the weather office? A lot of our information is online at weather.gov slash Milwaukee. Uh, fun fact, if you type in Madison, uh, that'll also get you to our website. Um, otherwise, uh, we, we, we have weather radio. You can listen in on what we're doing. And we have some social media pages on Facebook and Twitter as well, where we'll, we'll post updates to that. So um, you can follow us there as well. Final question, is that Doppler radar uh, back up on the pedestal and ready to uh, rock and roll? Uh, the crew is got the trailer backed up to it right now, and they're pulling their equipment out. So it's it's looking like uh, pretty soon we'll have that back. We need it back. It's getting close to the severe weather season. I mean, I guess you pick the you, what time do you pick to replace a, a radar? But uh, darn, that's uh, been fun to watch. So uh, interesting enough, uh, Tim. Thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure. Uh, we'll look forward to having you back uh, sometime, uh, hopefully during the summer. Yeah. Thanks, Jeremy. You bet. Uh, Tim Halbach from the National Weather Service, Milwaukee Sullivan office. And I say he, he's a good guy. He, he just humors me because, again, uh, big fan of uh, weather. So we'll take a quick break, though, and wrap up. Uh, you're watching Talking Pittsburgh. Brandon met a girl on a dating app. He finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. She must be a keeper. If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. I want to thank Tim Hallbach from the National Weather Service helping us out today. Love shocking weather. It's great. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the nice weather.